Hi, I'm Tyler Fulce, a nuclear engineer with a little over 10 years of experience in the nuclear power industry, from engineering to operations to emergency response. I don't claim to know everything nuclear, but I can certainly share some knowledge. If you have any suggestions of movies, TV, games, or articles you want me to react to, please let me know in the comments. If you like the video, please let me know by hitting the like icon and subscribing so you find out when I upload new videos. If you didn't like it, please let me know what I can do better. I'm still learning. Today we're going to be looking at a video by um, Kurzgesagt called Why Don't We Shoot Nuclear Waste Into Space? Um, Kurzgesagt does a lot of these really fun scientific uh, videos with a lot of fun animation. I'm a huge fan of the channel. And as always, I'll put the link to the original video in the description. So with that, let's get started. The limited edition 12,023 Kurzgesagt calendar is here. Every purchase enables us to make videos free for everyone. So get one for yourself or a loved one and be a sponsor of the following video. Eternal gratitude from us and all the burbs around the world. <laughs> here in the Kurzgesagt labs, we test very important ideas to see what happens when you blow things here. up or play with black holes. <laughs> Many of you They're suggested that we look into an idea that sounds reasonable. Shooting nuclear waste into space. It's one of those concepts that seems like an easy fix for one of the main problems with the nuclear energy. But it turns out uh, this there's idea that green glow again. Bad, but horribly <laughs> bad. And it gets worse the longer you think about it. Why oh, is boy. that? What is nuclear waste? Nuclear waste is a fuzzy term and comes in categories which vary from country to country. But in general, there are three broad levels. 90% is low-level nuclear waste, tools, gloves, or trash used at a nuclear facility that could be weakly contaminated with some short-lived radioactivity. Stuff. This stuff is generally <laughs> safe for normal disposal. 7% <laughs> is intermediate-level nuclear waste, Mostly materials that have been in close proximity to a That's reactor core long mass, enough to become dangerously radioactive. With proper handling, it's either safely buried or melted down and mixed into glass or concrete. And I love how every one of these involves the green. So, so 97 nuclear waste <laughs> that is similar to toxic byproducts from other industries. Not great, not terrible. We can handle it. The remaining 3% is where our problem is. Why did they show their sources? High Those level nuclear reputable. waste is very concentrated spent fuel taken out of a reactor core. Formerly uranium, it's now made of various it's dangerous and often highly radioactive I'm elements. Cores, it's actually going to be bonus, blue, if anything. It's also incredibly hot and not easy to handle at all. This is what we want to shoot into space. All in all, around 440 active nuclear reactors create about 11,000 tons the green of high-level nuclear waste each year. Since 1954, be a we've thing. accumulated 400,000 tons of dangerous radioactive, right. radioactive waste. Most countries are dealing with it by <laughs> green not glowing with rods, it and like in the can <laughs> towards the future. Great. So let's launch it into space. According to scientists, space is big and nobody lives there. So it seems perfect for yeeting away this mess. There are a few tiny problems though. Now they're gonna make space green. Problem one, stuff ain't cheap. Even though space flight is getting more affordable, it's still extremely expensive. Just to get something into low earth orbit costs on average about $4,000 per kilogram. Putting that into perspective, it costs about $1,600 to mine, separate, and fabricate one kilogram of nuclear fuel. So See, now that's right when they showed on the mining shaft that it's yellow fuel for uranium, but way the, more they're still going with the green and stuff. And greatly increased the cost <laughs> of the electricity they produce. To launch one reactor's worth of nuclear waste would cost at least $100 million per year. To deal with all the 440 operational nuclear power plants, high-level nuclear waste would cost some $44 billion per year for space launch before packaging, transport, and security costs are added. Okay, let's pretend we don't care. Currently, <laughs> we couldn't shoot like all the that. nuclear waste into space even if we wanted to. There just aren't enough rockets. In 2021, we saw a record 135 launches into space. 
just to bring up the point of the those rockets and filled them all with nuclear waste, the total amount that could be lifted green. into a low Earth orbit, <laughs> which is the closest orbit above the atmosphere, is nearly 800 tons. We'd need at least 14 times more rockets to handle just today's nuclear waste, let alone get rid of the hundreds of thousands of tons in temporary storage. We would need to create entire new space industries to keep up with the demand for giant, toxic space trash trucks. And it gets worse. Problem two, space is hard. We only made the calculation for low Earth orbit, where we send most of our rockets and satellites. Littering the space around Earth with thousands Don't of want that to crash back to Earth. fuel would be a nightmare <laughs> for space junk management and satellite collision avoidance. Worse still, at this altitude, there's still a little bit of atmosphere causing a tiny bit of drag, so we might have nuclear waste raining down from yeah. space within Rain just a few years. Stars. Experts so would call this a huge problem. <laughs> Clearly, we have to launch our waste further. If we uh... wanted to send it to, perhaps, the moon, we either need way more rockets, or we need to build much Nuclear bigger Godzilla. ones, yep. making it even more expensive. For a, later video. a single Saturn V, the rocket used by the Apollo program, which cost around 1.5 billion adjusted for inflation per launch, could get about 43.5 tons from the Earth to the moon. So we'd need about 260 Saturn V rocket launches every year. And of course, using the moon as target practice for nuclear waste-tipped rockets kind of makes a huge mess. So maybe don't take space. Godzilla. Space is empty. Do we really need a target? Shooting waste in any random direction is, you guessed it, also a bad okay. idea. Orbits are loops, which means they have a tendency to come back to where they started. True. Put enough in the sky in random directions, and you'll get one back eventually. So we'd want to That's launch a good point. A lot of people think space, space is just which means we need even send something to nowhere to infinity and beyond, if you will. <laughs> Not that we would be completely safe then. Earth might run into these interplanetary caskets at some time in the far future and experience a pretty meteor shower made from radioactive dust. Okay, how about we shoot it into the sun? Ironically, the sun is pretty hard to hit. And the sun the produces sun a lot more radiation gravity, too than stuff Everything on Earth is moving with respect to the sun, in including the rockets that we launch, meaning a rocket would have to cancel out all the orbital motion it has around the sun so it can stop orbiting and fall in. Because of this, it's actually easier to launch a rocket entirely well, they put out of not the solar system than it is to launch it into point. the sun. The size of the barrel or But the to do solar either system. of these things, we need even bigger rockets, probably the biggest we've ever built. Hmm. Nothing works. The thing is, Love it gets bird. even worse. Problem three, rockets go brrr. Rocket engineering has taken huge steps since the Apollo era. We've made them relatively safe. We've mostly replaced the toxic explosive cancer fuels of the past decades with much <laughs> saner mixes of liquid oxygen and hydrogen or kerosene. The newest radiation even land like themselves so that they can be reused. And yet, out of the 146 launches in 2021, there were 11 failures, which means that a sizable number of our rockets carrying high-level radioactive waste would be exploding on the launch pad, or in the worst case, disassembling at high altitude or crashing from hypersonic speeds. Each failure would be at least a to a bomb. miniature novel, but instead of being contained under a slab of concrete, spread throughout the atmosphere. Radioactive particles could make their way to faraway places by riding on the winds. Most would fall into the ocean, but some would land on the inhabited parts of the world. They could cover farmlands and get concentrated into our food or enter our uh, water supply. Which is, well, bad. Imagine regular large-scale nuclear disasters happening. People wouldn't be happy. Conclusion and opinion part. You wouldn't have explosions like a nuclear, nuclear bomb, even if that scary. happened, though. But the fear of it, it just and horrible ideas like shooting it into impact. space, reveals how bad we are at understanding risk. I think the they know they're exaggerating, of radioactive though, with elements all like the fun uranium and radon are actually released by coal. Burning millions of tons of coal each year leaves ash as a waste product that includes about 36,000 tons of radioactive materials. That is true. Less radioactive than high-level nuclear waste, but there's also a lot more of it, and it's yep. handled way less carefully. Some of this ash is caught by filters, I'm glad they brought but most this is up. simply pushed back into leaky mines, shoved into piles exposed to the wind, or poured into ponds that regularly spill into rivers and lakes. 
Living within 1.6 kilometers of an ash pile increases your cancer risk up to 2,000 times over the acceptable limit. And this mm -hmm. is on top of other toxic chemicals okay. like heavy metals and, of course, their massive CO2 emissions. And yet, while nuclear energy is flawed and its current form may only be a transitory technology, nuclear power plants are a harder sell than coal. Transitory nuclear waste technology. and the lack of willingness to deal with it are a real issue. It's not insurmountable, though. There are good methods to handle it, like burying it deep underground or reprocessing some of it into new fuel. But however we ultimately deal with this issue, we hope one thing is clear. Shooting nuclear waste into space is one of the worst ideas ever. Researching this crazy thing, conducting all of these important tests, and of course, creating this video took us around to... All right, I believe that's their outro. So yeah, I, I love I love these videos. They're a lot of fun. Um, one thing I want to point out, though, and I know they're aware of this, is all of the little cartoons, um, the green glow that they put on everything showing it's nuclear. That's about as silly as birds launching rocket ships in the space as they portrayed, <laughs> as well as it being those big, scary yellow drums filled with green rods. Um, it's interesting, the green, the green thing is kind of, uh, I don't know exactly where that comes from. Um, fuel rods uh, during refueling operations in a real nuclear plant, they actually grow uh, blue, and that's from uh, Serenkov radiation, which is um, it's actually kind of fascinating um, when neutrons are essentially breaking the light speed limit barrier through water. You can't go faster than the speed of light in a vacuum, but you can go faster than the speed of light in water, and that's what those neutrons are doing, and that's what causes that blue glow that you see um, in a nuclear reactor or in a spent fuel pool um, after the uh, vessel's been disassembled and everything, of course. And of course, the water acts as enough shielding, so you don't have to worry about getting too much dose if you're um, a certain height above the water. The Nuclear Regulatory Commission's requirement is uh, 23 feet um, above the uh, above the fuel source in uh most circumstances, such as a nuclear power plant, like the one that I worked at. Um, so yeah, I'm not sure where the green comes from. I love that they brought up the whole energy density thing, and they talked about how much radioactive particles comes from fossil plants, especially coal. Because um, that um, one topic for another video I might talk about is how emissions from a nuclear plant are not radioactive. It's just water. Um, it's the big fossil plants that have all, all the nasty stuff you get from all the excessive processing. And um, what it mentioned at the very end about um, reprocessing uh, nuclear waste, um, that's a great solution to reduce the volume by as much as upwards of 80 or 90% with, with reprocessing and putting them in, you have them sit in a spent fuel pool for a while to uh, cool off for uh, several years after it's done with the reactor. And then you place it into a uh, dry cask um, storage um, container, which is super strong, um, highly resistant to all sorts of storms, um, can be placed other ground like they suggested um, or even stored on site um, locally. Uh, some licenses you'll see on site at a real nuclear plant can have them stored there for past 2100. So yes, um, the nuclear waste is still something that the industry is working towards a more permanent solution. But in terms of volume of waste compared to other energy sources, far, far less. And I love that this video pointed that out. Those are the main things I noticed in this video. But if you saw anything, uh, let me know in the comments if I missed anything. And with that, um, until next time, thank you.